sustainability strategy. Um, the question that you'd really like to ask me, uh, but you think it might be rude, I'd like you to ask me that question rather than take it away with you uh, afterwards. So don't. I'd much rather people ask questions than uh, take them away with them. Uh, I joined IKEA a couple of years ago. One of the things I actually said Robert referred to is when I met with Mikhail Olsen, who's our CEO, um, uh, was I wasn't sure if I wanted the job. I was running my own organisation, a climate change organisation. Um, so I, it was a two-way interview, like the best interviews are. And I said to Mikhail, I said, if you're interested in being incrementally less bad, I'm the wrong guy. If you're interested in transformational and good, um, then I'm the right guy. And Mikhail's face lit up in a big smile. And I thought, ooh, that's a really interesting reaction because I hadn't anticipated that. And I knew I'd get offered the job at that point in time. I knew I'd probably accept it because I think, didn't think many CEOs would react in that way. Now, Mikhail and I joke about it because he's saying, transformational and good, where is it? You promised me transformational and good. So beware what you ask for sometimes. Um, the, uh, so IKEA is the world's largest home furnishing company. Uh, we, as IKEA Group, we operate about 300 stores around the world. It's a 60-year-old company. It's privately held. Uh, and uh, I've been asked, we launched a sustainability strategy uh, 10 days ago. And I was asked, would it be different if you were listed? I think the answer is no. That doesn't have to be, just to get that on the table to start off with. But we are uh, held by a Dutch foundation. That's like here. So I was kind of wondering, you know, why am I here? Well, we have a venture capital company where we invest in clean technology. Um, that's not why I'm here. We, we invest in wind farms. That's not why I'm here. I think it's because, uh, you know, actually, we're all operating in this space and there's urgency around it. So I'm just going to introduce, I'm going to spend about uh, five minutes or less going through some stuff uh, that everybody knows. So we'll apologize for that. And uh, uh, just uh, indulge me on it. But it's the way. We framed it in IKEA on the sustainability challenge and how you think about it in our life business. So with our 300 stores, we, we have big supply chains around the world. We have many products. So we have 770 million visitors. We have a billion people on the web. Uh, we have supply chains, really, that into 52 different countries. Uh, 1,100 suppliers. And every product's kind of a big product. So for us, it's 14 million cubic meters of timber uh, that we source. If you put logging trucks, you go from here to Phnom Penh, the IKEA value chain. Uh, in water, our water footprint, we could drain the Baltic every three to four years, our water footprint. Impacts, uh, it's interesting, you know, impacts can be good impacts or bad impacts, it depends what you do. But if you get a large impact, it's a great opportunity if you deal with it in the right way. Um, okay, sustainability in four numbers, as uh, I've shared with my colleagues. Scrolling behind me, this is distracting. Can you stop that scroll behind me? So. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stand and look at this. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, the first number, which everybody knows this, but I think it's really, this is a good sequence. If you've only got, if you're literally in a long elevator ride. So, one and a half planets, that's what we're consuming today. Five if you're in the US, three if you're in Europe. We're probably all kind of five, six, seven, eight planet consumers in this room, and that's your particularly virtuous. Uh, we've been in planetary deficit since 1980. It can't go on that long. And the core, the conservative projection is we get to about three planets by mid-century. Uh, and we run out of planet, quite frankly, there is only one. Second number, really nice arithmetic progression. Three. So three is the three billion extra consumers we get by 2030. So we're at two billion people today. The world is majority poor. Fantastic. People are coming out of poverty like never before. Hoorah in the emerging markets. Let's hope they come out of poverty faster and we should celebrate that. But it's, you put that number together as we go from 2 billion to 5 billion, the extra 3 billion consumers, people above the poverty line, uh, with 2 more billion standing behind them and 2 more billion standing behind them. Uh, then you realise we've got one hell of a sustainability challenge if we're already at 1.5 months. The, the, the thing that should stop us in the track, and I would like to thank uh, Bloomberg Business Week for their headline. I don't know if anybody saw it. It's global warming stupid on the front page of Bloomberg Business Week. Because I was there with, you know, as one of my colleagues referred to it in the US, I was in our Brooklyn store three days before uh, Slasher Sandy, as she referred to it, before Slasher Sandy came through. And, you know, we're still, we're still literally mopping up uh, uh, exercise going on as a result of that. So it's global warming, stupid. That's what it said on the front of Business Week, that they've been 
absent. And Obama said it. It's amazing how we celebrate the environmental community around the world to just celebrate it, the fact that the president said global warming. We need to do more than say something about it, but it's a promising sign. Six degrees, we're on the path to six degrees warming. But as the chief economist of the International Energy Agency said, if you keep on the path you're going, sooner or later you get where you're heading. <laughs> or we hope so. We're not on track for two degrees, we're on track for six degrees. So that's my third number, so one and a half, three, six. And the six degrees means, you know, we are, we are experiencing climate change now. Uh, you know, I've got a PhD in environmental physics, I've run a climate change energy over seven years, I can talk you to death about it if you want over the break. Um, the fourth number, 12, when my grandmother was born in 1901, she was born in Manchester, England. It was the ninth largest city in the world, Manchester. Uh, and a, a centre of global commerce. Uh, there were 12 cities with a population of a million or over. We've got 440 today. So if we look at the point, you know, 5,000 years into the future in a time machine, we look back and said, when did we build the build world cities? It was now, kind of in between 1950 and 2050. That 100 year period is when we built all the world cities. Lay down the blueprint for how we live, how commerce happens, how we entertain ourselves, how we get to work, the transport systems. <coughs> Fundamentally important. This is, this is when we urbanise. Right now. So those, those four numbers mean, actually, this is the time right now when sustainability goes, goes from being a nice to be mission critical. As simple as that. Right, right now. Um, if you look at... Uh, the, um, probably many people here have seen the, the work that was done on commodity pricing that's been done by uh, GMO, not the, by the private equity group, I should say GMO, not genetically modified organisms. Uh, it was done there by Jeremy Branson, also by McKinsey and others, looking at commodity prices declining through the last century, one and a quarter percent a year on average, except the two world wars and the oil price spike. Commodities got cheaper, 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 cheaper. And then the last 12 years, we've flipped that and added 40 percent. Uh, I saw a trader, there was a, it was a trader reporting on the current environment to do with food, and he said, it's an excellent environment. Lots of volatility, high prices and uncertainty, fantastic arbitrage opportunities. And I was thinking, I think, my God, we have a different view when we look at things under the breakfast table. <laughs> Um, you can see really high, and we're in you know, the first <coughs> year of high food prices. Food security is an issue for more and more people. Food security is a real issue. And the share of wallet for people over food and energy, issues that connect back to sustainability, the share of wallet is increasing. So, so we're in for a, a bumpy ride. Climate change, resource scarcity, food security, all linked together. Uh, and you know, I think that this goes from being a serious issue to something that is going to shape the business landscape and shape society right now. You know, it's not in 10 years' time or 20 years' time. So we look at that and we have, as I mentioned, our, our logging trucks around the world or the, the meatballs we sell or the leather we source or the palm oil. This, isn't, uh, this is something that... We absolutely have to manage robustly. We have to have long-term, secure, sustainable supplies as a fundamental basis of doing business. Uh, so we launched our, our strategy. This is our come by our moment for our strategy. Um, and uh, it, I think it's a very values-driven business. You know, we, I think many good long-term businesses have strong cultures and strong values. So we're not unique in that. 60-year-old uh, business, and the values have been increasingly codified, and we recruit against values. So we probably are, you know, probably are nice people, but we're also highly commercial. So you put those two things together. So you start off from values, and then you construct the business case that fits the values. <coughs> if your business case isn't going to work, you're not going to be able to deliver against the values. So we have a new strategy called People and Planet Positive. It's publicly available. We made it publicly available. It's an internal business steering document. So if you read it, and it reads a bit quirky, I'd encourage you to read it if you're interested in this issue. To be honest, it's uh, only 16, 17 pages long, most of, it, most of it's uh, in the first four or five pages. Um, then, this is the reason why we released an internal business steering document without releasing it. Transparency. We've got 140,000 cohorts. We actually want all of them to understand what's in our business steering document. Uh, they connect with customers, they have families. We'll just be completely transparent.